Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to one of the most exciting videos I get to film this year. That is right, I am participating in Victober and this is going to be my Victober TBR. So these are all the Victorian books I want to get to during the month of October. Now if you want to take part, there have been announcements in other TBR videos, all of which are absolutely fabulous. It's just getting me so hyped for October reading, but I've listed the host down below. There's some absolutely wonderful booktubers who just read so many amazing classics and have so much to say about them. So I'll link them all down below. Be sure to check them out and their announcement videos. But Victoria does actually come, like any readathon, with challenges. So part of my TBR, I'll be going through first the challenges and then all the other books that I've thrown in to challenge myself to read during the month of October. Starting off with a general challenge, which I think is a really great one if you just want to get into Victorian reading, is to read a novel and then watch the TV or movie adaption. And for that challenge, I am going to be reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Now, I have read this book for university. It was a very stressed, fast read, but I didn't really get to read it for enjoyment. And I really want to go back and revisit it and really become acquainted with this novel. I am very, very excited excited to get to this novel. It's been on my list for a very long time. So thankfully Anne Bronte sneaks into very early Victorian period and it is focusing on a woman who is in a very abusive marriage and suffers from domestic violence and her husband is a drunkard. So it is quite interesting to see the state of women within this um, Victorian society. I think this is going to be absolutely wonderful. And there is a TV adaption which was done in, I believe, the late 90s, but it is very, very good. I highly recommend. Next for Kate Howe's challenge is to read a book with a proper noun and that is going to be The Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. So I thought instead of just doing all Victorian novels, Victorians were known for their amazing lyrical poems and very long narrative poems. So the Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti, I have read before, but I haven't read her other works. And this is an absolutely beautiful edition published by the Folio Society. I'll link it down below if you do want to check it out. There are illustrations throughout this book, which just give it that extra feel of being a Victorian novel itself. So I absolutely love the idea of reading Christiana Rossetti's works. She was part of the pre-Raphaelite movement in the mid to late Victorian period and they really wanted to recapture a certain quality of art and this innocence in art instead of focusing on this realism. So there was a high amount of fantasy and fairy tale in their artwork. Next is Lucy's Challenge, and it is to read a novel written by a woman anonymously or under a pseudonym, and that's going to be Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now, I'm actually going to be buddy reading this with Kate Howe and many other amazing booktubers. I'll link them down below as well. But this is going to be absolutely fascinating because I've read North and South. This year, I've read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And so I really want to read Mary Barton because it was one of her first forays into literature. And it was a way that she was just trying to make her place within the Victorian literary scene, which is quite busy because she started writing around Charles Dickens' time, which is in the 1850s. So I think this will be very interesting and it looks at women's conditions during the Industrial Revolution and how their place within society was greatly changing. So the lovely Ange, her challenge is to read a book by a favourite author from one of the hosts. Now I have picked Dickens because I believe nearly all the hosts love Dickens to some degree and I'm actually going to go do his Night Walks. Now it is not a novel, it's actually some essays. This is part of the Penguin Great Ideas series and I thought it'd be really interesting to see what Dickens had to say on social problems within England and within Victorian society through some essays. So whilst it's not a novel, I still think it's very important to really understand the whole grasp of Victorian society through the many different forms in which they wanted to portray their ideas. The last challenge is from Katie and that is to read a Victorian novel from the first or last decade of the Victorian era. I've chosen the last decade since I find that quite fascinating because they had moved on from that heavy realism of Dickens into some more artistic yet still socially 
present ideas and that's going to be the yellow wallpaper and selected writings by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Now many of these short stories are set during the late Victorian and early Edwardian period so I'm only going to be reading the first seven short stories from this collection which were all written in the 1890s and I think it'll be very interesting because Charlotte Perkins Gilman is actually writing of a woman's experience having to be locked away in a room and almost driven insane from these kind of dictated conditions that women had to suffer from. So I think it'll be very interesting to see how women's role had evolved from Anne Bronte all the way through the late Victorian Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So I think it's going to be a very interesting contrast. All right, so these books are fulfilling the challenges of October. But of course, I'm still going to be reading some wonderful books that I have picked out for myself to really challenge my Victorian reading. Starting off is going to be not Lady Audley's Secret, but also written by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. It's A Trail of the Serpent. That is one of her other books. I couldn't readily find a published edition, so I'm holding up her more well-known piece, Lady Audley's Secret, which I think was like an early Rebecca. But this one sounds quite interesting. It sounds like a bit of a cat and mouse detective story. So I'm really interested to read Trail of the Serpent. I'm going to be starting off with that one as my very first buddy read of Victover, and it's going to be so so much fun because I love discussing really interesting psychological crime books. Keeping within the sphere of crime novels, I'm going to be reading The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Now I have read The Woman in White, that was for university, but I've never read The Moonstone and I am very very keen to read this book. Uh, Wilkie Collins is probably one of the very first suspenseful mystery writers of the Victorian time and I think that greatly fed into the Victorian desire to read murder mysteries and Sherlock Holmes detective stories. So I am very much interested to read The Moonstone and to see where the 1870s audiences really got hooked into some fiction. So still within the Victorian era, I'm going to be jumping across the Atlantic and reading one book from a US writer during the Victorian era, and that is going to be What Katie Did by Susan Coolidge. I actually haven't read What Katie Did before, but it is an absolutely beloved book of one of my very good friends, and she recommends it alongside Anne of Green Gables to me, even though I have read and loved Anne. I really wanted to see what the hype was behind this book, and so I'll find it interesting to see how she's based this story on very early Victorian era America. My next choice is actually going to be some of the Penguin Small Black Classics. These are really interesting little snippets or short stories, classic stories that were written by very famous authors or authors who you wouldn't really pick up or know to find. And first is going to be Elizabeth Gaskell's A Nurse Story, another Elizabeth Gaskell to read, but I'm really keen to get into some of her shorter works as they often come with relations to her story Cranford. Next is Matilda by Mary Shelley. Now Mary Shelley probably sits more in the Regency period but she also probably was early Victorian period like Anne Bronte and her story is Matilda. I actually haven't read anything but Frankenstein from Mary Shelley and I absolutely love Frankenstein so I do want to get into some of her other works. Lastly is Guy de Moss Passant and it is Femme Fatale. Now he was born in the early 1800s and died in 1893 and so I think it'll be quite interesting to see how the French were writing during the Victorian period and to see if there's any influence of French writing in the Victorian writing itself because even though there's always been this animosity between England and France there has always been this kind of sharing of art and ideals so it'll be interesting to see where that fed into, into the literary circles. And finally the very very last book I have on my Victoria TBR is Silly Novels by Lady Novelists. This is by George Eliot. Now I have read some George Eliot before and it was really hard to get into. I read it for university and she's, I don't think she's an author I can really speed read. So I want to read 
This is part of her essays, like Dickens' Night Walks, it is part of the Penguin Great Ideas series. And this is going to be really interesting to see how a Victorian writer, a female Victorian writer, really placed herself and also female writers of the time and previously into the literary genre. I'm probably going to closely compare this to, even though it's not Victorian period, but Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own, where she was greatly admiring the writers of the past to see where George Eliot brings up women writers for probably feeding into some stereotypes of a female novelist because George Eliot was quite unique in her writing and she was a very unique and interesting woman to read about. All right, so I am beyond excited for October. I have honestly wiped the plate clear of every other book I'm only going to be reading. Well, I'll probably chuck in a few more, but I'm going to try and read 99.9% .9 of Victorian books during Victober just to fill the quota of these wonderful literary reads. So let me know down below if you're participating because I'd love to watch your TBR, at least talk to you about what books you want to read. Or let me know if you've read any of these and which one I should start first. Besides the two buddy reads, they're locked in, but all the other ones are going to be going by whim. So thank you all for joining me. I'll see you all next time. Bye.